Good evening, everyone. We welcome you to our Christmas Eve service here at Life Journey Church. For those of you who need some more warmth and light in your life this Christmas time, this season, you are in the right space as we are tonight having members of our congregation share what Christmas means to them and also some special memories they have. There will be some beautiful music as well as a time of a Christmas children's moment and a brief sermon. So tonight, uh, Get ready if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube or the website, you're in the right place. We now have duty with us to help us with our Advent time. As we've gone through the successive stages of this Advent season, we've remembered the importance of hope. How hope is that girding factor that we have that enables us to have a vision of something good to come. And then we also know not only is there hope, but there is peace. The Prince of Peace who has been given to us in the form of Jesus Christ, who guides us in this journey that we experience. And not only is there peace, but we've lit the candle of love that represents that all potent force of spirit that guides us in life. Not only is there love, but there is joy as the scripture declares that the joy of the Lord is your strength. As these four candles have already been lit, tonight we light the Christ candle. And now duty in her lighting of this Christ candle, remember that the flame of spirit is lit in your heart tonight that you might live this life in God's blessing. Be blessed in this service. Many times 
Tuttle family coming to you from our home, uh, and we want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Um, Burns is going to share our favorite memory. Um, I think one of our favorite memories is when Jaden was five years old. We were in uh, down in Orlando for Disney World, and Christmas morning we got up early and we went to have uh, went to have breakfast um, at the castle with the Disney princesses. And then we enjoyed the rest of the day um, at the Magic Kingdom. And I think one of my favorite memories of that day is sword fighting with Jaden um, right there um, in the middle of the Magic Kingdom uh, and just chasing each other around. It was a fantastic trip. Uh, Jaden, what are some traditions that we have? Uh, hanging out with stockings and making cookies for Santa and hanging up ornaments on the tree. Yep. So our traditions are pretty similar to everybody else's. And Kinsley wants to say Merry Christmas. Thank you so much. Have a great Christmas.
What does Christmas tradition look like to the Johns Williams family? I would have to pull from a recent message from Pastor Jeff about finding joy in waiting. I enjoy waiting for family to get here from out of town so that we can watch movies and laugh. I enjoy waiting for the food to get done. I enjoy smelling all the Christmas smells that the food brings and the turkey cooking and the sweets in the oven. I enjoy waiting to see the looks on the faces of those opening their gifts and be surprised by what's inside. Um, I enjoy waiting for family time. And the traditions I enjoy is family coming together, um, movies, game boards, you know, sharing laughs, some drinks, and, you know, just kind of hanging out and waiting for everybody to open up their gifts. The traditions I anticipate are the sweets. I like making the cookies and the brownies, drinking the milk all together, and having a chocolate showdown. Um, I, I, I like help cooking, and I like to watch movies, and I decorate the, um, cookies, and um, do some games. From our family to your family, we would like to wish all of you a Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas. Oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark streets shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. How silently, how silently.
and talk about what we're what Christmas is about and our fa what? our favorite traditions. Mm -hmm. Traditions. So, what's your favorite Christmas tradition? Decorating our tree and getting all the lights up outside and inside and getting to just go under the mistletoe with Mama. Ooh, yeah, I like that too. And we watch Christmas movies and mm -hmm. listen to Christmas music while we're decorating. Yeah, pretty fun. That's that's probably my favorite too. So what does Christmas mean to you? Christmas means family and Jesus and celebrating and getting and giving. So you like getting or giving better? Giving. Giving? Ooh. It made my heart feel fuzzy when I used all my money to spend it on my family. I know, right? I enjoy that too. I was like getting to see you guys' faces on Christmas morning when you're opening your presents and seeing how happy it makes you. That feels good and also feels awesome to get really cool stuff for my family too, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's what Christmas means to us. We have lots of fun traditions in the past and hopefully a lot more in the future of cool stuff we'll get to do. And obviously Christmas means so much to us about family and getting to celebrate Jesus' birth and um, probably our favorite holiday, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Favorite holiday. So I hope you guys are having a great Christmas season. We love you all. Our scripture reading is taken from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 14. Now, there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in squaddling clothes lying in a manger. And suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward all.
to the Life Journey Family Moment. This is a very exciting day. We got lots of friends on here on this Zoom call with us. So today we're gonna talk about a different kind of gift. Since it is, it's uh, December, right? And Christmas is coming up. Are you guys excited about Christmas? Yeah. Oh man, me yes. too. All right, well, I've got a magazine and I've, I've got it on the computer. So let me share my screen with you and I'll, I'm gonna show you this magazine. Are you ready? Now, this first page has the Disney princess on it. Who likes princesses? Me. I think princesses are unselfish. I know that Cinderella loves animals. She loves to sing and play with the animals. They come sit on her shoulder and she talks to them and they talk to her and they all whistle and stuff, right? She is very patient and kind. Well, did you know that God gave us fruits of the Spirit? Who wants a fruit of the Spirit for Christmas? That sounds so weird. But guess what? God gave us those things so that we could, we could give a different kind of gift and we can receive a different kind of gift. It's not, it's not always about the toys, but we could be like the princess in that we could use the fruits of the Spirit and have patience and kindness. Now let's talk about these toys right here. No. These are the big dinosaurs. Who likes the dinosaurs? Okay. Me. Is Me. the dinosaur? Me. He looks like Me. when we're playing with our brother or sister, and they want to take our toy from us, oh. and we say, "No, no, no! You give me that toy back, or I'll bite your head off." That's kind of like a dinosaur, isn't it? God gave us the fruits of the spirit of love and joy and peace. And I want to I want to give you guys an idea. What if we did a Christmas challenge this year? When something goes wrong, sing a song. What do you say, Jacoby? Do you see something on that page that you like? The kinetic, well, I already have the six variety thing. Yeah, look at that. That other one down here in the corner is called faithfulness. Faithfulness is dang the course. It's don't give up, stay faithful. Oh, what about this one, you guys? Star Wars. Baby Yoda. Who loves Baby Yoda? Me. <laughs> Adora, but you know, mine's scary. I think he seems like a gentle little creature. And Bella. gentleness is one of the fruits of the spirit that God has given us. Gentleness is a strength that allows you to help other people. It's a strength that you have that you can go and you don't have to say, see, I told you so. Gentleness is a strength that allows you to go, I'm happy for you. I want the best for you. One more page. How about those headphones? Look at those cool headphones. I like the headphones. Does anybody want a pair of cool headphones for Christmas? Yeah. I guess. There's a tablet. Here's a tab tablet. And guess what that tablet says on it? It says self-control. Self now tell me this. Have you ever been playing a video game? You're playing and you're winning. And you're like, oh yeah, 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 I'm winning, I'm winning, I'm almost there. And your mom or your dad or somebody comes in and says, it's time to go to bed, shut that off, shut down that video game. Oh, oh, oh. That happened to you? Oh, Every the day. 
every day. <laughs> every day, all the time. Yep. Every, every second of my life. <laughs> one of the fruits of the Spirit is called self-control. Now, you may not like this one. Sometimes it's really, really hard to have self-control. But, okay, have you been in the car with your mom or your dad or whoever, and you're, you're, you see the lines in the road, right? There's a mm -hmm. line on each side of the road. And those yeah. lines, they keep you, you're, you have to stay in between the lines because if you go off and you go past the line, you could hit a tree or you could hit another car or you could get into some into a ditch and, and you could get into real trouble and bring harm and you could hurt yourself, right? So you got to stay in between those lines, right? You know what I'm talking about? Right. Okay. Right. Self-control mm -hmm. self is like those lines in the road. Mm -hmm. It's a guideline for us. And when I think about the fruits of the Spirit, I think all of those have one thing in common. All of those fruits, the love, joy, peace, gentleness, self-control, patience, kindness. There's a lot of them. When you look at all of those fruits of the Spirit, they're all about helping other people. And the Bible says, faith is shown through love. So if we can show love, then we're serving God. Isn't that cool? Everybody give me a whoop whoop. Whoop whoop whoop. Come on, everybody give me a whoop whoop. Whoop 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 whoop. You guys have been great. What do you think, Pastor Chris? Y'all have been awesome. I've missed seeing your faces so much. Adios, amigo. Yeah, adios, amigo. <laughs>
The scripture reading for this evening's sermon is simple and straightforward. It is Mary's response to the angel after the angel informs her about Jesus. It comes from Luke 2, verses 37 and 38, and it reads this way. For nothing will be impossible with God. Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Simple but powerful. I didn't become a Christian until I was a teenager. I was baptized in 1978, but I was already submerged in Christmas traditions. Although my mom and dad never talked about the Christmas story, I never heard about Mary, Joseph, and Jesus in my house growing up, I would hear the story over and over and knew it well before I ever attended church. The carols that we would sing would tell the story. Oh, little town of Bethlehem. Pageants being displayed would show the story. Away in the manger. And I was always amazed how people would go out of their way to be faithful and create festive displays of joy. Oh, come all ye faithful and joy to the world. I could not imagine Christmas time without any of that. I loved the story of the Christmas child, even though it wasn't something that I had grown up with. It was not until later that I learned it was God coming to us in that story. O come, O come, Emmanuel. My mom knew what Christmas was like without all of the celebration and merriment. My mom grew up in a family that never celebrated birthdays or holidays. She had no participation of any kind in any celebrations where people just came together and joy was displayed and life was celebrated. She told me once that her father did something for her on her 12th birthday, but her mother got very upset and it never happened again. When my mom married my dad, and you see their photos up there, and they had two kids, me and my brother Jack, my mom went out of her way to make a big deal out of birthdays and holidays. She didn't want us to experience the life that she had growing up. So she went out of her way to make it so. For nothing will be impossible with God. Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your will. When we were very young, my parents went out of their way on Christmas Eve to put up the tree, to put up all the decorations, to wrap the presents, and bake all the cookies. Can you imagine that on Christmas Eve night? We would get up on Christmas morning to a totally transformed house. And we have these ornaments on the tree. And believe it or not, these ornaments my parents got at their wedding in 1960. It would be their 60th anniversary this year. My mom did die a few years back. But these ornaments hang on our tree today here in Indianapolis. And, and by the way, this is that tree topper, 60 years old, that my parents have had on their tree their entire most of their lives, and then they gave it to me, and it's been in my possession for a while. I always get sad thinking about that, but I'm so glad that I have that momentum. It brings back all those Christmas memories. We lived in a very small house, and my dad had multiple jobs just to keep food on the table and a roof over our heads. But it was always amazing in those early years how the day would begin so special and it would go on and on. We felt like we were rich. Later in the day, extended family would get together and the celebration would continue. It was the best Christmas ever. Just look at me on the floor, in front of the Christmas tree, playing with my cars I got for Christmas. As I got a little older, my mom would make fruitcakes in early December, and then she would drench them in peach brandy. Yuck. 
I don't use alcohol in mine. But she would also make lots of cookies and candies and pies and cakes. You know, does that sound familiar? Like what I do around Christmas time? Me and my brother also got in on the act. Here we are making sugar cookies. Um, and I guess I've been doing it ever since. As people would come to the house, they would be amazed at all we would have. It was the best Christmas ever. When I was in college and I went to Orlando, Florida, I never came home for the holidays. You can guess why my parents always came down to me to have a Disney Christmas. So here is me and my mom. We're in Epcot Center. This is the day after Christmas uh, back in 1982, believe it or not. It was the best Christmas ever when my parents would come down and we'd have the Disney vacation and they were with me in school when I was in Florida. But then when Jeff and I lived in Boyd's, Maryland, we had an open house for our church, but typically it was the week before Christmas. We also had family Christmas get-togethers of both his family, the Miners, and my family, the Zeers, where we would stretch out the tables across the family room in the basement so that we could fit everyone around the table. Here is sort of a small picture of what that is. It's not everybody, but we had siblings and parents and nieces and nephews and cousins and aunts and uncles, 25 people gathered together, both sides of the family. And I even had to make two turkeys for when we got together like that. It was the best Christmas ever. When we moved to Indianapolis, we started the church Christmas open house the first year we were here. And it expanded very quickly. People would come to the open house that didn't necessarily attend church. That really felt nice because we wanted to have a place where people could come that didn't have anywhere else to go to celebrate Christmas. As the years went by and the celebration expanded, you can sort of see if you've been to the house, but here's some good photos of sort of the spreads that we do at Christmas. That was the food table. Here's the dessert table. The there's a lot more going around the house, but that gives you the, uh, an idea of what that is. But the preparation intensified. And nowadays, it can't happen uh, without my Christmas homies, especially Andrea and Jennifer. Uh, they spend almost a week with me before Christmas to help me get things prepared. It is a very spiritual experience. And Andrea and Jennifer even say that it wouldn't be Christmas without that time of preparation. That preparation is really important. We are getting ready to celebrate the coming of God to earth. O come, O come, Emmanuel. It was the best Christmas ever. Several years ago, my Discipleship 102 class, uh, we, were, we used to do some service activities at the end of the class. Well, they decided that they wanted to help a homeless family at Christmas. So we sponsored that family. It was five children and a single mother. We took the mom out Christmas shopping. We also had the mom out for a meal with us. And then we visited the family, the, not Christmas Eve, but the day before Christmas Eve. And we brought by some food, some clothes, and some gifts. And the kids were all tucked away in bed in the one-bedroom apartment. They were sort of scattered around cots and couches and even beds in the bedroom with mom. When mom saw us, she was full of tears. They were happy tears, joyful tears at seeing us. It was the best Christmas ever. For nothing will be impossible with God. Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. I share my story with you on this Christmas Eve, this COVID Christmas Eve, 
Because this unraveling of my best Christmas ever shows what Christmas means to me. But it also shows how the best Christmas ever always happens and evolves from year to year. Others share their stories this evening, and they're all unique, yet meaningful. And they're all part of the Christmas story, our Christmas story. Some people want to shut everything out and declare that Christmas is just about Jesus, and that is all. No tree, no gifts, no celebration, no fun. How is taking away fun and enjoyment and celebration and sharing making it all about Jesus? It seems to me that it's removing Jesus from the equation altogether. If we shut out the community gatherings, if we shut out the joy and hope ushered in due to the celebration and fun, if we shut out the deliberate time to create the beauty and the majesty, and we shut out the freedom to celebrate because some say that is not about Jesus, then we are really shutting out Jesus. We are whole people living whole lives. We're not compartmentalized where we keep things in boxes. See, some might say that Jesus comes in this box, so we can't put it under the tree. But I say, we hang it on the tree. For nothing will be impossible with God. Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Christmas can be crazy and chaotic, but it is also a beautiful and meaningful time of year. I like listening to Christmas carols, I like listening to the old classics. I like listening to the music my parents and grandparents listened to. I love looking at all the sights and elaborate decorations. I also love spending time with my friends and my family. I love the experience of preparing the house and the food for the Christmas Day open house. Unfortunately, this COVID Christmas has altered that just a little bit. I am celebrating with my dad in Maryland this year. He's had a rough time dealing with my mom's death two years ago, and now he's been through a series of brain tumors. He's hanging in there. As he ages, many things get more difficult. My dad loves music, especially classical music, and he has an elaborate stereo, and he has lots of classical music, but it's too cumbersome for him to operate these days. He listens to his pop's channel in his car, but he rarely drives. The music that he loves has gone silent. So this year for my dad's birthday, I am putting together and setting up an Amazon Echo speaker premium sound system with an Echo sub. So all he has to do is say, Alexa, if you want, play Amadeus Mozart Symphony Number no. Twenty Five in G Minor. Symphony Number no. Twenty Five in G Minor, K One Hundred Eighty Three, I Allegro con Brio by various artists and Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart on Amazon Music. And I can see my dad now. Alexa, Alexa, end. For my dad, this will be the best Christmas ever. He will get his music back. Christmas can be so meaningful if someone who loves you is planning something really special, just something for you in mind. I remember when Jeff gave me Chrissy Chrissy our first Christmas together, and there she is. 
He fooled me into thinking he was making something for me. And so he would have all this wood piled up and some tools. And as, I would, as he would let me in the house, he would be hustling and bustling to get it all away. But he always made sure that I was seeing what he was doing. But it turns out that he created a diversion for a kitten who lived outside in the wild, but now was living inside his house going wild. <laughs> and that was, the, that was his cover for that. And so, but it worked. Now, I was surprised, and we named her, appropriately, Christmas. That was her name. Now, her pet name was Chrissy Chrissy, because look at that face. She looks like a Chrissy Chrissy. That was the best Christmas ever. Just as Jeff planned that special gift of Chrissy Chrissy, I believe God is planning and doing something special for each of us every day. The story of Jesus is the story of God coming to this earth in such an incredibly humble way. It is God's amazing gift for you and for me. Last year, amidst my flurry of preparation for the church Christmas open house, I took a day of silence at a retreat center. I wanted to have a deliberate day of silence and preparation just to sit with Jesus, have a conversation with God for a day. And this was one week before Christmas, you know, the best time, the most busy time of the year. I will carve out time during the season and take time here and there for various things during Advent, but never a whole day and a whole night away from the house just for that silence. A few others here at Life Journey Church joined me on that silent retreat. There was a beautiful tree next to the fireplace. There was greenery in the chapel. It was so nice just to see the sights amidst the peace because it was just silent. I took some moments to listen to some Christmas music and carols. I had put headphones on. I journaled, I read the Bible in front of that fireplace. I walked outside in the cold. And as I was there during the day and the night, I would pray, I would read, I would listen. And I had a candle there to remind me of the light of the Christmas season. God with us. O come, O come, Emmanuel. So let's take some time the week after Christmas to do some of that downtime as well. It is the season of Christmas, not the day of Christmas. The day after is not the time to put Christmas away. Let's keep it active. Keep an active heart seeking toward God. The spirit of Christmas hasn't gone anywhere. My hope is for all of us to have a quiet moment during this holiday season where we each can connect in God in ways that work for each of us and have those celebratory moments where we share in the joy and the hope and the love and the season and the festivities all around us. Take the time to reach out in safe ways to greet one another to be with one another. Share a video of your events on Facebook. Maybe you video call people and invite them to be a part of what's happening at your home or gathering. Intentionally be the community of Jesus Christ and creatively reach out to connect during Christmas. I pray that we all celebrate safely during this time, that we find the ways to connect to each other and that we spread the hope and joy of Christmas in all that we do, but not just any Christmas, this Christmas, even this COVID Christmas. Let's make it the best Christmas ever. Luke 7, 37 and 38. 
for nothing will be impossible with God. Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. My mom had a difficult childhood and tried to give me the best holidays, the best Christmas she never had. I am forever grateful for that. I am grateful for how she approached it when she had kids of her own because that is how I choose to celebrate Christmas. The light of Christ is with us. The light of Christ is within us. That is always the best Christmas ever. Have a Merry Christmas. Amen. This is going to be a Christmas like no other that we've ever experienced. But we come humbly to stand in your holy presence, gracious creator. The world feels like it is turned upside down. We are all treading, praying for one another, trying to help each other. There seems to be no end in sight. Almighty healer of all the universe, give wisdom to those working to end this pandemic. The leadership of our nation longs for your wisdom, long suffering, and most of all, grace. Bring us all to one mind and one accord. Our church and our congregation all miss the fellowship we were all so accustomed to having. We will never take that for granted again. Heal the sickness of those who need healing. Help us all to stay strong, anxious for the day we can all be together again. For when we are together, we can exhort, embrace, and encourage one another. I say to all who are listening, may our God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. In your precious name we pray, amen.